Morning, windmill. Check it out. Another foggy morning. March 20th. Mark it in your calendars. June 20th. Now we got the 18th and the 20th rainstorms forecasted. That'll work. It's a Western Canadian Farm Progress show time, so it always rains during that time. Except for the last two years. Hi, I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. I'm Tony Fast's daughter. Our family has been blessed to farm in Montana for over a hundred years now. And it wouldn't be possible without the great team we have and blessings from our Savior Jesus Christ. We went uh, full San Canadian, eh? Hey. You know that the Canadian's plastic coil wrap is just as hard to deal with as American? And Australian. <laughs> I'm not really sure if Outback rack one, Outback wrap ones are made in Australia, but considering their offices in South Dakota. I don't know enough about Australia to know where South Dakota, Australia is. So. <laughs> well, Tim already went through them, adjusting all the brakes anyways, and found one wheel seal we got to change. How bad's it leaking? Just, Just seeping, he says. Not bad at all. It hasn't even really even made it into the brake drum yet. So we'll see. We probably have, though, depending on what brand of hubs they are, we probably have one of those on the shelf. And we've got uh, a couple bearings. You guys want to see daylight through a bearing um, to change. But I think we might wait on that until we've got the openers, electric openers here to do that. So, yeah, it's uh, be a few tinkering projects on these, but they're. Uh, they're gonna work great, I think, for the farm. Um, nice thing about these, they are openable from both sides. You can put the crank on one side or the other, it doesn't matter. Um, the tarps are tarped from the center, so you just hop up on top there, run the short handles to tarp them. And then you have to run all the way to the back. You know how to do that anymore? I kind of forgot how to do that. I know. Already. <laughs> and their cable spool roll nickel parts, so you don't have to worry about any wind taking them or anything like that. I think they just hang down, or do they hook back up there? They go. There is a catch up in there. Yep. There you go. I just, like I said, out of shape. As long as that's taking you, I'd probably, I'd probably try to put electric ones on, huh? <laughs> this one's not working. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Not a bad buy, I don't think. Eventually, I mean, Tim talked me into it. We'll probably sandblast them eventually. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. We'll see. They need some touch up in some spots for sure, some paint, but I don't know what we'll end up doing. They got spots like this. <laughs> And whatnot. That's just needs to be washed, but they're they're used trailers. So what do you expect? I mean, I could have bought a set of aluminum ones for another 80 grand more than what I paid for these, and then I wanted to worry about that. But we'll see how this works first. We really like the B trains model. Then we'll maybe look at that. Oh, I got the fifth wheel kingpin greased up. Tim's bringing the truck over. We'll get this thing hooked up. And uh, we're going to have to slide the fifth wheel because when I pull it home with the white truck, you can see that my mud flap holders hit that. And I couldn't get the fifth wheel slid, but I knew they, it wasn't going to damage anything. It was just touching. So. In Canada, they like to run everything short. They want short couple trailers. Obviously, the, there's a lot of axles in a short distance here, right? Montana wants the long spread out. I think they, their theory is that the road can recover a little bit from it being pressed down as the trucks roll over it. I don't know if that's my, I think that's what's going on. So our 53 foot or 50 foot trailers, 51 foot trailers are spread out and can almost hold the same amount of payload as these can. These are heavier obviously because there's more axles and steel and more length. Kingpins on our 50 foot trailers are set like way up here in the front at like 18 or 22 inch spacing. This is like all of 36, I'd say. So that gets really tight then to the landing gear with the truck, so. Uh, 
That sounds better. I think just your brakes hit. Did you hit the brakes when you stopped? They almost turn in here. They just skid it at the end. But hit your fifth wheel slide. We'll see if that's going to work. It's got air to it, but let me see your hammer. Sweet. Big old drift punch or something. No, I didn't go. breaks the way it sounds. Time to get these uh, screens changed out. Um, this machine kind of got a couple different things going on. It has two spots where it pulls air through one of them is right here where the seed drops through. The air will suck in here and go up and it'll take all the light stuff off originally. First time it comes through the machine. And then as well as on the back side, when the clean goes off the back, anything else that's, that's dust or whatever can get sucked off there. The seed hits this top screen and anything that's bigger than that screen will slide all the way off the end and go out the, out the tailings. Um, then it'll drop, the good seed will drop down through here and the smaller than what we want will drop from the first level to into the second level. And the smaller stuff will even drop through the third level and go down here in the bottom and go out the tailings as well. Clean seed will stay on top of this screen and on top of this screen and that'll go out the back and go into the clean truck through the conveyor or whatever we have set up. So that's how this is work, how this works. All the small stuff will fall all the way through the bottom. Tim cleaned out everything out of the cleaner. So we have a lot of big stuff on the bottom. So don't let that confuse you. Once these screens are pulled out, there is a bunch of these little like bouncy balls in there. And those will bounce up and kind of clean out the screen somewhat. They don't do a perfect job of it, but those are in there to do that. We're gonna switch out from our chickpea screens, which are the big 28 millimeter holes. For oats, we need a 16 or an 18 in the top, kind of depends on how it flushes through and works for cleaning. And then a 14 round and then a five slot or a, I have five and a half slots. So all the screen options we have here, there's cross slots and, and normal slots that run the other direction, round ones, lots of different options. So these are built in Great Falls, Montana. I mean, most of you probably could read that. But so Montana company building these and uh, really handy that we can clean all of our own seed now. See, there's quite a bit of money for, for that on the farm. All right, change some screens out.
Thank you. <laughs> That's what I'll go down in history for. What do you do on the weekends? Mm -hmm. I fix stuff. Yeah. What's that? I said, this guy builds a deck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just two frozen brakes. Just two. Just two. Back axle, lead trailer. <laughs> Plan B. Yeah. All the horsepower didn't matter. It's because they cut the exhaust down. Yeah, that's the air gets it. out fast. Yeah, yeah, I know. We'll we'll talk about that thing later. He's stuck. The screen ends are in the back hopper and uh, yeah. He's just spinning. So I'm gonna give him a little little shove from the back. Of course, the GoPro was locked up and I didn't record it, but we're out. <coughs> All that fun and no proof. Well, we're running. I've actually, been going for a while. Pretty good pile of oats in there already. Oh, better go turn this on. the 370 out because we need to do the hubs differentials I don't know what they would be called um, on the front axle of this tractor but it needs to be warm in order to do it so I'm gonna go check the mail for the fasts with the tractor that'll get it warmed up I mean after all if you don't check the mail in the tractor are you really a farmer so I'm back from getting the mail in the tractor and um here I'll just show you real quick that's my drain plug and there's your center but anyway so they obviously have to be on the bottom dream so i jacked up the tractor in the center and put the one tire over there on the left side of the tractor where i needed it to be um but then that makes the opposite side of the tractor turn the opposite way i put it back down slid my jack over towards the right side raised up just the right side and of course it wouldn't turn because the tractor was in park there is a way that you can put these tractors in neutral and leave the seat without it automatically setting the parking brake on you so i did that with just this right front off the ground and then was able to get out turn the tire to where the drain plug was on the bottom so currently both drain plugs are straight down. If you can see my handiwork, there's a piece of tin that's kind of V-shaped. This was the pan I was trying to use, but I know that's gonna be overfilled. So I have another pan down here. Hopefully it funnels in. I don't know how fast this is gonna come out, but um, we're kind of both about ready to find out. It's warm, but not, <coughs> ooh, not super warm. Built a little when it burped. Mm. That's not good. It's kind of glittery. But 
Hey, that's a hole in one, right? <laughs> and I'm not much of a golfer. Okay, so in the fall of last year when Nacho and I put these tires, the outer duels on, um, see in these spacers, there's these holes. So that works for that. This one we put on a little bit closer to better because the oil will probably run straight down through that hole. Nacho and I didn't know that to line them up. But my oil pan won't fit between the tires. So let's go find something else to use. All right, so I have this red, um, it's more or less a catch pan for draining your hubs on trailers and stuff. I believe it'll work, but I'm gonna have to watch it because I don't think it'll hold all the oil. So we might have to put the plug back in at some point and dump the pan, start o or restart. I don't know what kind of He-Man put these uh, plugs in to begin with, but they certainly weren't gonna rattle loose. Yeah. That's what I was waiting on. Almost missed my fan. Alright, part two is the center differential. Nothing better than not having a rag close and your hands are stuck and covered in slime. Wow, that came out fast. Cool. Not near as much junk on that plug, that's good. But we figured, I, I showed Tony the plugs from the hubs and he thought they'd probably be okay. It's probably just normal wear and tear on a 2400 hour tractor. We've both seen worse. 